Hello everyone, hope you're doing good and thank you team for the presentation and inviting me to Strategy Fest. I'm humbled and super excited to be here today. My name is Ankur Gupta and I work as a business strategy advisor in the corporate strategy team at FedEx. Things that usually come to mind while hearing about strategy are those complicated Excel sheets and those colorful presentations. But trust me, it's a lot simpler than that. And in the next 10 minutes or so, I'll try to tell you how. At least that is what I hope to do. Strategy is usually considered to be the bold overarching statement that drives an organization. For example, grow revenue by doing X, Y, and Z. While this may partly be true, I consider this statement to be an objective. And to me, strategy is a lot more than this. The word strategy has traveled a long distance for me. It started from being the most overused word in the slide during my MBA program to now becoming the most meaningful word for me in my current role. To me, strategy has three parts. Why, what, and how. Why are you doing this? What do you want to do? And how will you do it? The why, it clearly defines the reason that an organization or a department is pursuing a goal for. It is that broad statement that defines the mission or the vision. This can range from to provide the best customer service to to be the largest company in an industry. For example, we at FedEx believe in make every FedEx experience outstanding. Once there is a clearly defined why, the next step is to define the what. This should be both qualitative and quantitative and simply means the objectives a department or a team needs to meet and also the KPIs they need to achieve to fulfill the why that we have already defined. For FedEx, it would mean to design the products and services by keeping the stakeholders in mind and always ensuring that the customers and the end consumers have an outstanding experience. Finally, and often the most neglected aspect is the how. I, on the other hand, feel that how is as important, if not more, than the why and the what. Without answering the how, any strategy is incomplete. But if you answer the how, an organization can reach to the specifics that they needed to achieve the overarching goal that we've already talked about. The how will identify things such as the specific departments or the teams that are needed to support the goal, the capabilities that are needed, the potential roadblocks that the teams might face, the action items for the teams, and even the timelines within which the teams need to deliver the projects or a deliverable, etc., etc. Once these questions are answered, the strategy that you created should be communicated and shared widely. I would say share, share, and share is the key here. For a strategy to succeed, everybody in the organization needs to be aware about the why, the what, and specifically how they are going to contribute towards the realization of the strategy that you have just created. Just facing those taglines, the posters on the wall, or maybe even on the company websites will not help. Everyone in the organization should feel connected with the strategy. Sharing should include regular town halls and email announcements from the senior leadership and should be cascaded down to the various departments that are involved in, in the implementation of the strategy. Internet sites, regular meetings and daily stand-ups, they are all a pretty good way to keep everybody aligned. And with that, now that we're talking about sharing the strategy with everyone, this brings me to the next important thing I want to talk about, which is democratizing strategy. I personally have been using the term POA or plan of action ever since I can remember. On one hand, I used to talk about the plan of action at the workplace for those upcoming meetings and projects. And on the other, I used the term POA at my home to plan a trip or a dinner for the family members. I never specifically called out that we need to strategize for a family dinner, although that would have been pretty interesting. But apparently, this is what I did when I talked about the POA in any setting, be it personal or be it professional. I am pretty sure that all of you would also have called out the plan of action in some form or fashion in, your, in various aspects of your life. What I'm trying to say here is that all of us are very good at creating strategies and do it in every aspect of our life, be it personal or professional. Agreed. Some situations are more nuanced and need, need a deeper thought process. But we all have been strategizing throughout our lives and are pretty good at it. Strategy is not something that needs to come down from the chief strategist in an organization. It needs to be open for everybody to contribute towards. The inputs from people at different levels across the organization 
will for sure differ in depth and maturity, but isn't that what we want? We want to have a process that is not fully mature and inflexible, but one that is ever evolving. And for that, strategy needs to be democratized. Agility is the need of the hour and the organizations need to have a culture that promotes experiments and does not place punitive measures around failures. But in order to effectively democratize strategy, an anchor should be set so that even when democratized, the organizations and the teams and the departments, they are working towards one common vision. This can also help alleviate those turf wars while helping facilitate innovation and also creativity. The teams need to follow the Pareto's principle and prioritize those 20% of the causes to gain 80% advancement before striving for the overall 100% accuracy. This allows the organizations to be more focused, better utilize resources, be more nimble, drive faster results, and focus on the most important items rather than trying to do everything all at once. The additional benefit about democratizing strategy is the diversity of thought and perspective that come with it. By including a larger group in the strategizing process, you are essentially creating a microcosm of the overall organization and are getting a holistic view of the various departments in the organization. It is this culture that will ensure that the organization can easily adapt for any scenario and get the best possible outcome of the strategic process. However, when you're trying to democratize something and incorporating people from different departments, you need to have a clear line of sight and open communication. It may not mean that you always have 100% consensus, but rather making sure everybody is able to be vocal about the part in the process and be able to call out what they want to say. And while we are talking about scenarios, I feel that this is the perfect segue to focus on another very important but again, very rarely accounted for aspect of creating strategy, which is called scenario planning. If there is anything that the past couple of years have taught all of us is that we need to be prepared for the extreme scenarios and continuously challenge ourselves to think about the extremes. Once we've got the most favorable and the least favorable extremes in place, the next step is to understand where we currently stand as a team in between those two extremes, as a team, as a department, or even an organization and having this baseline in place will help us analyze the capabilities critically and will help our organizations to have a clear understanding of the misalignments and gaps that need to be filled. From my own personal experience, I can surely say that logistics for sure is an industry that can benefit a lot from scenario planning. Once you have identified the those two extremes that we talked about, the most favorable and the least favorable, and your own baseline, which is somewhere between those two extremes, this should be followed by identifying the levers that we need to pull to be prepared for the identified extremes. Finally, we need to make sure that we are updating our strategy from time to time so that we move from a reactive mode to a more proactive mode. The interesting thing about extremes is that they come very unannounced and leave very less time for an organization, a department or a team to prepare for or even to pivot. I'm sure that none of us saw COVID causing such huge disruptions across the world, be it supply chain, be it manufacturing, be it operations, you name it. More often than not, we will find ourselves in the midst of a storm that will be too difficult to navigate if we don't continuously challenge ourselves to prepare for all of the plausible scenarios. In the end, I would say that strategizing is not a simple process for sure, but if there are some things that you can improve, for your strategic planning, they would be to start planning now to be ready for the uncertainties that are actually eventualities and are bound to happen if not today, then tomorrow. The, uh, then you should answer the why, what and the how for your organization and also elicit participation from a broad and diverse group of people from across the organization. With that, I would like to draw my speech to a closure. So thank you all for your time and for hearing me out. I really enjoyed talking to you all today. Thank you team for organizing this and inviting me to the strategy fest. I would end by saying that if you would like to continue the conversations, please feel free to reach out to me and connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.